Well, hello and welcome to PM Express and the conversation on the table is challenging economic times. Well, it seems as if that there's money literally finished in the system. And I always joke to say that either the paper on which to print is on shortage or the ink with which they will print the paper has run out. But somehow everyone is complaining about cash not being in the system. Banks are folding up, media houses are laying off and other jobs and other businesses are laying off and complaining on cash flows. People are literally waking up on a weekly basis with their value just being wiped out. Sometimes they only say it's 10% or 17%, but if you are worth $5 million or $10 million, 17% is a huge amount of your value just to be wiped off. For somebody to argue, to say, oh, previously it was 60% and now it's only 17%. I don't think if you have that sort of money, it's a good excuse. But literally that's what's happening. The president has conceded that times are hard. Finance minister says we should tighten our belt. Folks, there comes a time in every nation that they have to bite a bullet for better times ahead. There comes a time when every generation should bite the bullet for their descendants who are going to follow. Is that the times that we are going through now where government being the bigger spender becomes more prudent? So we don't overspend and cut our coats literally according to the cloth that we have? The economy has just been rebased, and so we are worth much, much more than we were before. Is it truly that we are wealthier or we are just looking at somebody's corn farm and uh, brushing our teeth in anticipation of chewing somebody's corn? There are a lot of foreign entities who have invested here. How much of this rebasing is for indigenous Ghanaian businesses rather than foreign businesses who are eventually going to repatriate their money? Or it's just a window for the state to borrow more because clearly debt to GDP is going to come down. It gives us uh, more room to borrow. Is that what is going to happen? Well, I don't know. The economy says all the indicators are in the right direction. So what is happening in the system that everybody seems to think that this hardship is a bit more than usual? Well, my name is Nana Asakwa the fourth, chief of the very little republic of Akomo Edumasa. I don't have the answers, but with me in the studio today is somebody who will try and help us understand what is going on in Ghana with regards to the economy. Don't go away, coming back. Well, thank you very much with me in the studio as a man who needs no introduction at all if you have followed financial current affairs in Ghana. Mr. Ken Thompson, CEO of DLX Finance. Uh, Ken, you're welcome. No, no, good evening. How are you? Very well, very well. Good and, uh, to see you. Good, good see you. to see you and we're honored to you have know, you on the You know, the last time I was here, with, I think I was still on the economy. I was with somebody else. I think, I think Mr. Casey so. Hayford or we're talking about something. Must have been. Yes, 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 yes. It was so. a while back. Yeah, it was a while back, yes, uh, yes, a few years ago. So, so while back, I have to say, I appreciate it. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. Can the the, the uh, economy, we all seem to be a bit confused. It seems to be not holding out. It, 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 in real life, it doesn't seem to hold. But on paper, it seems to be fine. You know, so, I mean, you are in the financial system. Uh, what, what is happening, if it's a fair question? You know, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where the uh, confusion comes from. Mm. Because, you know, what I've said all the time is that uh, it's about the value of the city in your pocket. Mm. That's all that matters. And, you know, there's a general sense of malaise, you know, discomfort on ease. Unemployment is rising. Uh, people talk about the banks. But for me, the banks, you know, the direct employees are the, the least of my worries. You know, when, when I think about unemployment, think about all the subcontractors um, that are shedding staff, um, other companies where they have two or three staff that they are shedding. Um, contractors are not, there's no business for contractors. Mm -hmm. um, even if you have done some business, you're not being paid. Um, for private companies, you know, people that have done business with you are not being paid. We seem to be in a situation where uh, jobs are declining, you know, nothing seems to be happening. 
and so there's a lot of discomfort and unease. There's a lot of discomfort and unease. And that is what is happening. Uh, this didn't start yesterday. Um, it was coming. And for anybody who's listened to me speak over the last four years, I've said that we're heading for a disaster, you know. And as we talk, as we go on, I'll talk about some of the things I've talked about. But things are bad. You know, things are bad. Are, are they going to get worse or we've hit and now we're, now we're going to get better? I don't know what the bottom is. I don't really know what the bottom is. Uh, but what I know is that we've got to now start to think seriously the sort of sacrifices we have to make and make those sacrifices. Like you said, you see, every, 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 every country, you, you know, you get to a certain, in history, you get to a certain critical juncture. And the decisions we take will have a huge impact on how the state, you know, the prosperity of the station, you know, uh, nation for years. So we need to really sit back and really take a deep look at ourselves and decide what do we want. And you know, we always tend to say it's the politicians, but as far as I'm concerned, the the politicians reflect the people. So as Ghanaians, what do we want? You know, and that's what we have to we have to answer. This this bullet biting era. I mean, all throughout history, uh, with regards to finance and businesses, Ireland, South Korea, Japan, America, everywhere. Th th there's a point where they said, "Look, this is it." Some even went as far as even sometimes locking down their country to say, "You know what? Nobody goes out, nobody comes in until we get to this point," and. They go through hardships, suicides, diseases, everything, and then they come out. Is, is this a biting bullet well, error? Well, we, ha we have to take some hard decisions. And we must listen to the finance minister. The finance minister, he must know what he's talking about. The finance minister says, you know, he's questioned free education. I remember he said uh, the, uh, it should be means tested. Mm -hmm. And I, I, some politicians lambasted him. He, self, he said that we need to tighten our belts. You know, so let's listen to finance minister because Ghana is broke. You know, I've said it so many times. If you spend over ninety percent of your income on three things, you're broke, and that's the issue. Uh, the money for investment does not; it's not available. And you know, when you live in a country where the government is the biggest employer, is the biggest supplier, is the biggest contractor, is the biggest everything, and the government has no money to spend, you're in trouble. And that's where we are. You know, we're in trouble. And unfortunately, uh, when we borrow the money, we use it for consumption. So rather than, you know, use the money for development, we've consumed the money. We've used to pay wages and salaries. We've consumed it. And even when the money has been uh, used for development, the projects we've, we've invested in have been influenced more by politics by than, than anything else. So what do we expect? I mean, hello, Ghanaians, let's wake up. What did we expect? This didn't start today. It's been going on for years. So, you know, we have to decide what we want. But where we are, it's not a very nice place. I mean, should, should, should there be a forum of a, of, of a big what we want, like a saint like forum as to <laughs> what we want, where we, we sit down and take a pen and paper and say, you know what, no more sugar import, no more rice import, say, uh, no more that import. Have a list. And okay. Say, well, you see, let, 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 let me go back. Let, let me let me let me uh, sort of almost go over some of the things I've said in the past. Mm -hmm. You're broke. If you're broke, you can do three things. You can either increase income, or cut expenditure, or do both. That's all you can do. So Ghana is broke. I mean, we're broke. And the president said we're broke. I mean, if if you I mean we've been broke for a long time. <laughs> You know, if you spend, if, if you earn a 1,000 CDs and after you've uh, paid your house help, you've bought petrol, you've paid rent, I mean, you're left with 100 CDs, you are broke. You know, really you are broke. So what can you do? Either you increase income, you find another job, you cut expenditure, or you do both. I mean, increasing income has become tricky for us because our industries are not competitive. You know, Ghanaian industries are not competitive. Why are they not competitive? Because of the poor infrastructure, because of the taxes, the, the, the multiplicity of taxes, and also because of the, the, the city is strong. So because the city is strong, you know, and it's propped up all the time, you know, it's cheaper to import than to produce locally. And, you know, buying made in Ghana is not 
an emotional decision. It's a financial one. So we want to increase income. So what should we do? We need to be more productive. We need to produce more, to sell more, to generate income. We need to widen the tax net. And that is something that we've talked about over the last 30 years or 40, 50 years, and we've never done it. We have to widen the tax net. What else are we going to do? And we got to cut expenditure. We've got to take, you know, in accountancy, we'll say, take an axe to the expenditure. We've got to cut expenditure. We have to cut expenditure. And, and it's the only way. Um, I don't see any other way. The, the, the widening tax mix, is, is it a political will or technology challenge that we are unable to? Because you say, well, somebody's selling coconut, say, oh, well, he makes you know, quite a bit, but he doesn't pay anything. Oh, he's selling kenke. You know, she makes quite okay, a bit. You see, we, we have to decide what we want. Uh, we can decide that we want to live in filth. We can decide that our children will go to school in filth. We can decide that we have no roads. We, we, we decide. Because we've got to realize that all those things, they cost money. You know, those things cost money. And I think that politically, we've been, able to wi we've been unable to widen the tax net because there's a certain feeling that if you widen the net, you become unpopular. Mm. But it's the only way. What else are you going to do? It's the only way. So we have to decide what do we want. As a nation, what do we want? I mean, uh, you <coughs> finance minister is supposedly being very, very prudent. I mean, even though he has 110 uh, ministers to pay. Yeah, well, plus, uh, plus V8, <laughs> plus business class, first class travel, so I was just plus gonna, special assistants, I was just plus you, if uh, I give directors. You the ask, if I give you the axe, which are the first probably 10 or three things that you are going to You know, if, if, if you give me the axe, I'll say ministers 50% off. <laughs> just go. I'll just say 57, 50%, just I'll cut it. I'm not saying 50% is the right number, but I say I can only work with 50% off, out. You know, let's, I mean, what you see, and also it's, it's, it's very difficult to ask the citizenry to make sacrifices if the government is not, itself is not seen to be making sacrifices. It's, it's very difficult to ask me to make sacrifices when every morning I'm getting pumping, pumping, get up. I mean, I'm 57. Every morning, people are claiming off the road. And it's my money. You know it's my money. It's my money. I, pay the I buy the car. I pay for the fuel. I do the maintenance. I pay the driver. And I pay the occupants. And every and probably, morning, and probably, I'm being cleared off the road. And probably even the sarin. Yes. The, oh, yes. The sarin. <laughs> and every You see, that is the only way. Because you, you can't ask us to tighten our belts if you do not demonstrate that you are tightening your belts. And I don't like to um, talk about politicians per se because we are the po we are Ghanaians. We put we decide what our politicians will do. So let's not pretend that um, you know they are a, a separate breed of people. We should decide. You know we should decide what we want. We want. But I would cut fifty. I'll take fifty percent off, straight. You know, and you've got to work with. You can only work. You can only say so you can only make the soup with the meat that you have. Mm. You only have 50, uh, 50 uh, chicken legs. Make your soup with that. You don't have 100. Just do it. Uh, and so that's, all, that's all the decisions we have to take. I mean, uh, how hard is this going to be? Because, uh, you know, we run a political system where the other ones would make political capital of it. If you, if you dare come and say, look, I'm only going to make chicken leg soup today. Ah, me, when I come, I'm going to make chicken thigh soup. Look at him. He's giving you chicken leg soup. You, you and see, therefore, then I'm not going to tell you what meat I'm putting yeah. in the soup because... I want to stay in power. You know, leadership is a tough thing. Leadership is tough. And, you know, I'll paraphrase what Margaret Thatcher said. He said, if you set out to be liked, you can't take decisions. If you set out to be liked, you can't take decisions. There's something here. Yeah, we set out to be liked. You know, leadership, let's talk, leadership is a difficult space to be in. That's why we like leaders and we expect them to take tough decisions. But it's a tough space, you know. He says, if you set out to be liked, you will not achieve anything because you cannot take decisions. Mm -hmm. that's, that's about it. I mean, that's the reality, and we have to um, deal with that reality. But I think you're asking a difficult question, and you've asked it about several times as to what do we want as Ghanaians? Yes, what do we want? I mean, we want free, as a, you know, I mean, education is an emotive subject, so mm -hmm. when you talk about free, it's just, SHS. I will say, hey, Mr. Thompson, 
free, we also, I want our children to go to free. But because you have free is SHS, you can't do something else. The money is from one pot. You can't do something else. Because, before, because you have, if you are going to have, what's this thing called, the new one, NAP score, NAP score, NAP. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that, you can't do something else. Life is about choices. And strategy is about deciding the things that you won't do. That's, that's it. You know, but don't expect that you're going to do everything. You know, it's not possible. We have to make choices. And, you know, even if we're the richest country on earth, we still have to make choices. Life's about choices. Mm -hmm. So you are broke, mm -hmm. and we all know we are broke. We accept that. You either increase income, you cut expenditure, or you do both. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else you can do. So that, that's just a simple matter on the table. It's just, what are, what are you going to do? But what are you going to do? If you're broke, you're broke. Smart borrowing. Smart. <laughs> I, I, I heard smart borrowing. Debt is debt. Debt is debt. Whether you borrowed it smart or not. It's not. It's debt is debt. You know, and it's not so much. You know, you got to. There's good debt and there's bad debt. There's good debt where you put the money in investments, which will generate a certain return to pay for the debt. And, and, and there's bad debt where you put the money in projects that have very little return and you chop the other half uh, uh, through corruption. And we've been doing a lot of bad debt. It didn't start today. So what do we expect? The, the finance minister is in a fix there. Uh, he's in a very, he's between <laughs> a rock and a door. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, of course it's in a fix. It's in a fix. And um, I hope, you know, for the finance ministers to say that we should tighten our belts. Um, he, he knows what the numbers are. I mean, he can see it. And I hope he gets political support to take the decisions that we need to do to get out of this situation. Because the government needs to raise income. You know, we need money. It's as simple as that. So, uh, Ken, I mean, you've... I, I can see I'm making it too simple. Uh, but I, I think, yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 it is what that, it is. That, that's what it is. It is what it is. I mean, there's nothing more complicated about it. There really is. It's, it's, it's not that complicated. Would, would, would you say the finance, I mean, but you can't do anything. Like, look, let's start with the ministers. Let's reduce the luxury cars. I mean, can, can, can or should they do that? Well, if it was me, I would do it. I mean, because I've got to show the citizenry. Think about it. I've got to show the citizen, cit citizenry that as a leaders, I'm also tightening my belt. But it didn't start yesterday. You know, that's, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, f uh, leadership, uh, to be a leader, you need to be authentic. And, 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 one, and you are selling people a certain vision. And, and, and you need people to believe in that vision. And without authenticity, it's going to be very difficult to carry the people along. And, and symbols are very important in, in how you build authenticity, you know. I mean, should, should the state or should government come and say, listen, Ghana, I'm going to provide you with free SHS. And if I do that, I will fall short on roads and I will fall a bit short on maybe provision of electricity, but education will be free. These, these are the options on the table. Uh, should, should the communication be something? Technically, that's what happens. Maybe we don't, you know, technically, that's why we, we elect MPs. And the MPs uh, represent us. And the MPs are supposed to be uh, our voices in Parliament because Parliament is a very, uh, it's a very strong body and it takes, uh, it makes laws and that's why we, we make sense. So, technically, that's what should be happening. Of course, it's not a science, you know. But technically, that's what should happen. We should say, I mean, our, our leaders should say, you know, these are the issues. This is what I can do. This is what I'm going to do. And as leaders, those who they'll say, look, we're going to take these decisions. We think they are in your interest, and then, you know, we we'll work with them. You, you, you think it's an information that should be put out? I, th or, I, th I think it's information that is put out, but probably not, not put out in the way that you are you're saying. Because w when the, uh, the, uh, the, the, during when elections, our leaders, the people that stand for public office, tell us a lot of things. And based on what they tell us, we vote for them, which, whichever we want. You know? So if they go and the situation is not what is, what it, the situation on the ground is not as what they told us, we they should be coming back to tell us that, well, I said I'll do this, but I can't do it. So, but this is what I can do. What do you think? Let's say for the State of the Nation address, the president comes and says, look, for the 1st of September, I'm offering free education to everybody. It will cost me 1.3 billion. 
And so fellow citizens, pardon me, but for roads, I would be maybe 60% short on road delivery, but I will give you free SHS. Uh, would, would that sit well with people? Well, that's why the person is a leader. And, you know, uh, our leaders have a responsibility to carry us along. So you need to carry people along. I mean, that's what you need to do. I mean, my grandmother in, in the village, um, it is, she needs to be carried along. And it's up to the leadership uh, at whatever level to make sure that, you know, the people understand and appreciate why it does uh, things that it's doing. But as a leader, you've got to take tough decisions. And that's, that's what has to be done. You know, that, that's that, that we have to do. I'm going to take a break and come back and we'll look at the city nearing the, uh, you know, the you know, five, nearing five Ghana cities to a dollar. And basically, that's literally the value, you know. And normally, if you have maybe just 800 cities in your account, it might not mean much. But if you have a bank balance of, let's say, 200 million or, you know, 300, 500 million, and 17 or 8 or even 3% of that is just wiped off within a week. That's a whole lot of money that you've lost for, you know, through no fault of yours. Can it ever be the situation that, you know, the CD becomes stable or it's one of those things on the stable, whether we like it or not, we are going to lose value. We're coming straight back. Good old CD. That's what we are talking about. And I've heard Ken say that I don't care all the English you talk about. What's the value of the CD in my pocket? <laughs> Is it that we'll get to a time that it will stop depreciating? And have you been, you heard that, look, the CD is even, you know, it's, it's, it's a false value that we placed on the CD and that we should let it fall to thy kingdom come yeah, yeah, yeah. and work with it. Uh, is, is it that it's going to get this to the five CD mark and probably even beyond? Well, let, let, let me give you, that. I, I want, let me, let me put your, uh, you know, mind at rest regarding yes. the CD. Well, the, the price of the city is supply and demand. Mm -hmm. It's a supply and demand. 75%, and listen to this, 75% of the containers that come to this country, they go back empty. So if we have every 100 containers that come to this country, they go back empty. Supply and demand. If you want your currency to be strong, fill those containers. You can't have a strong currency when you import everything. It's not possible. And I've said that the cities were valued, and one of the biggest disincentives to uh, production because our, our, um, our, our, our goods are uncompetitive. And I've said that let the cities, let the city fall, allow the city to fall. Of course, it's going to be painful, but whatever savings you make, use to support industries and uh, industries that export, and that's what we should do. And what can Ghana export? It's our Greek. When you are in, when you are in turmoil, you go back to the basics. The basis for Ghana is a Greek. When, when there's a war, that's why people go back to gold. So let the CD fall. And I've been saying this for over five years. Said let the CD fall, and whatever savings you make, use it to uh, to support your production in agriculture, so that you can export some more. But you can't have 75% of your containers that come here going away empty and expect to have a strong currency. It's not possible. It will never happen. The CD will always decline unless we change that, you know, narrative, is the rate at which it declines. But what is decline? It's supply and demand. It's not possible. And, and every time the city de declines, you know, we hold the Bank of Ghana. What is the Bank of Ghana supposed to do? The Bank of Ghana is your bank manager. If you have five cities, the bank manager will work for five cities. If you have 10 cities, $10, the bank manager will get $10. If you have $100, the bank of Ghana will work with $100. But they're supposed to be releasing... But, no, but what are these? No, but they can only release... Dollars into the system ah, you've, given, you, you, you've given... <laughs> you've given the bank of Ghana money to buy tuna pa for your, your light soup. Meanwhile, you want tolu beef and you want, <laughs> you want chicken feet. It's not possible. Anytime the city is full, you know we should haul. Get Minister of Agriculture, get Ghana Export Promotion Council, get Minister of Trade and Industries. What are you doing to increase exports? That's the most important thing. But you cannot have a strong currency when you import everything. And you see, I ask everybody to go to you know one of the shops, you know, a lot of the shops in town, and the, the only thing that probably is Ghanaian is probably the water. And even there's foreign water on the market. There's nothing Ghanaian. Our industries are not competitive. So every time you buy a, bottle, a, 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 a carton of free juice, think of the people that you are, you are supporting. You're supporting the driver, 
these are the people overseas. The driver, the supporting the mate, driver's mate, when the person sells fertilizer, the person carries the fertilizer, the tractor, the farmer, the farmer's wife, the farmer's holiday. But that's what's happening. All the jobs are exported overseas because the city is overvalued. You know, and, and, and we've, we've, we have um, got to the point where the value of the CD is used as a litmus test for uh, economic, um, um, how well we're doing economically. No, let the CD go. What are you going to do about it? It's supply and demand. What are you going to do about it? There's nothing you can do about it. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Unless, unless you start to generate more dollars. Your, your currency will subside. Because nobody wants your currency. Are you saying in you a see, way we are living in a false economy? When you, what do you mean by false economy? Well, if, if your CD is, you know, artificially being held up there, oh, then... The CD is not being artificially held. The CD, the CD, the CD is dropping. We're just, you know, we're managing the drop. That's all it is. It's not artificial. So rather than go from maybe one to, you know, 5.6 is okay. Let's let's do it over time. But I mean, remember when CD went one to one? Nice. So from ten thousand, you know, to a dollar. Now is how much? Fifty thousand. Nearly fifty thousand. I mean, show me which currency has done this badly. But it's because we don't produce anything. You can't have a strong currency when you don't produce anything. Seventy-five percent of the containers that come to this country, they go empty. back empty. What do we expect? What do we expect? So once again, I say we should decide. I mean, we should, you know, for now, you were saying what should we do? We should say we should declare an emergency. Say, look, we're in crisis. I mean, it's been said, but it's not been said. We're, say, look, we're in crisis. Even that alone, um, it at least forestalls the demand for people when they ask for wage increases. Then go back to say times like '92 when we, we we made a huge effort to increase. Uh, non-traditional exports and everybody should go and export something export 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 you know I was reading a paper last week and you know how much I request exports and non-traditional exports I think mm -hmm. about 12 billion dollars in 2016 Ghana won't be even 1 billion dollars same land same sun same people literally you know the CD will continue to fall unless we start to export I mean, how difficult is that to understand? Uh, has, has the Galamse thing contributed to what's going on now with money not being in the system? I mean, when the you know, gold miners were there, they were spending in their rural areas, they were buying fuel, they were buying parts. I mean, has it affected what's happening now? And to what extent? You know, there's always been Galamse, and the city has always fallen. So let's put that to one side. There's always been galamps. The city has always fallen. Of course, uh, you know, w what we forget is that for a lot of areas, the only work that's available is the galamps. Because if they, if, they plant, if they plant whatever food they, they plant, they don't get, they don't get uh, enough money to justify the costs um, they care in doing that job. So, of course, that's affected local activity. But for anybody to suggest that um, uh, things uh, have become, uh, we are at this point because Galamse has gone down, I mean, really. I mean, that's, that's really ducking the issue. I mean, yes, there's some impact, but I don't think it's that much. Can we, I mean, can we bite the bullet if the CD were to free fall to wherever it is that it will land, whether seven to one? I mean, can we afford parts for our cars? Can we buy medicine? And these are essentials. Maybe, okay, well, we'll, not, we'll stop eating cornflakes and imported corned beef, but you know, parts for your car, uh, medicine, medical services, how, how do we survive? <laughs> I, 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 I take you back to what you said yourself. Uh, it's going to be tough. You have to take tough decisions. I, I wouldn't say allow it to slide to seven straight away. I'd say, okay, manage it. And whatever money you can save, you to support agriculture. Because we've got to go back to basics. For Ghana, it's agriculture, agriculture, agriculture. Agriculture is a silver bullet. I've said it so, so for the last five years. I've said agriculture, agriculture, agriculture. Make agri sexy. Make agri sexy. Make agri. Make make uh, um, you know. Um, make, when when you have young people going to agri, uh, and they find that sexy as you have opened your MacBook and it's looking so sexy, then you know you're doing the right thing. Then the country starts to change. 
make agric sexy. But it's agriculture, agriculture, agriculture. I mean, so the city falls and, you know, we can't buy spare parts. So what else are we going to do? What are you going to do? But we should export, export, export. You know, every time we wake up, we should tell our, we should put pressure on our politicians. What are you doing to make us competitive so we can export? That's the only conversation we should have in this country. That is the only conversation we must have. Export. Export. What else are you going to do? Export, export, export. Is the only conversation we must have in this country. Export, export, export. And every, every six months, we should haul whoever is responsible for it and say, look, okay, what percentage of continents now go back empty? Yes, yes, just go to ask. That, that, that's all we should do. That is all we need to do. Export. Let nobody fool you. Export, export, export. Unless, of course, maybe God blesses us and we find some huge oil well that produces, is going to produce maybe, I don't know, a million barrels a day, then the party will start again. But export, export, export is the only way. Can, you know, the, the economy has been rebased, 200 billion in excess. And I always ask this question that how much of that money is really ours? Because in the account, they said, look, and who will be a bruiser if you say, you know, so you're working past somebody's farm and you see his corn really getting bigger and therefore you're also growing bigger teeth based on somebody's corn. Mm -hmm. How much of this money is really ours? Well, you know, so your grandfather left your house and it's revalued. It used to be 5,000 cities, now it's 10,000 cities. A big deal. It's still your grandfather's house. You know, um, so you can remortgage. Remortgage. It's your grandfather's house. Very remortgage your grandfather's. It's not given to you. Um, it doesn't really mean anything in terms of the value of the city in our pocket. It doesn't mean our debts are lower. It doesn't mean we are increasing income. It doesn't mean we've cut expenditure. It doesn't mean uh, we are paying less interest income. It doesn't mean that. It, it gives you more room to borrow. Or? Well, you can borrow as much as you like, but can you pay for it? If you, if you borrow, you can't pay for it. You crash. And when you borrow, what are you going to do with it? You know, I've said that, let's increase taxes. Increase taxes. We're in crisis. So the government should say, look, Ghanaians who are in crisis, whoever government is there, we're, we're going to increase taxes for the next two years and show exactly what it's going to use the money for. You know, and convince us that taxes need to go up because we need to increase income. Has, have taxes not been increased already? Well, they need to go up more because we need the income. How else are going to generate income? The same, so, uh, with regards to widening or the same formal well, sector people why, who are. Why, why, why didn't it increase it? But let's not get excited. Rebase is nice, but it doesn't change much. You still pay the same amount of interest on your loans, you still have the same amount of loans, your expenditure hasn't changed. You rebase is nice. You, you think we should declare an economic yeah. emergency? Well, it's been declared. Uh, then is we would need to create an emergency of sorts, you know, um, and then decide how we're going to increase our income. The things I've said, I keep going back to increase our income, cut expenditure, or do both. We, we need to we need to do something. We need to take some hard decisions. What was, was the IMF coming in not an emergency declaration that we seem to be coming out now? Therefore, maybe we've saved our time. If if there's such a uh, I mean. <laughs> You know, so sometimes I don't know why we, we, we hold the IMF responsible for our troubles. I, know, I, I read the IMF for red herring. You are in difficulty. And you come to me, you come to me and say, I say, I'm in difficulty. And then I say, Nana, give me some money to tide me over. And then you say, okay, look, Ken, I'll give you five hundred CDs. But when I give you five hundred CDs, you can only buy two bottles of beer on credit. The rest you pay cash. He said you are upset. The IMF, you say you are in difficulty. The IMF gives you some money to tide you over. So the IMF will come with its rules to ensure that you are able to pay the money back. That's all it is. What's the IMF done? The IMF didn't put us in this situation. Did they do it? They didn't mm. do it. So for me, the IMF is a red herring. You know, we have big issues that we have, we have to take some hard decisions, and, and that's the most important thing. But to say that the IMF, you know, is responsible for it, I need to that. Cut expenditure, increase, increase in, income, or do both. Or do both. That is the only way. It's the only way. Uh, Let anybody confuse you. Is the only way. Which is the low-hanging fruit? Cutting expenditure, or increasing? 
which, which would be the low hanging fruit for us? For us. Cut expenditure. Cut expenditure. Start by cut expenditure. Cut expenditure. Cut expenditure. Cut expenditure. I will take an axe to expenditure. Cut expenditure. Cut expenditure. You've got to cut expenditure. Cut expenditure. Uh, you know, increase income. Increase, start increasing some taxes, increase the taxes, start aggressively to finish the things that we said we'll do, the National Identification Program, let's do it, let's start to widen it, you know, and let's, let's start to do something. So, so in, in the midst of all this, uh, how about you know, creating regions? What, what, what would be your position? You think create regions, probably more regions, more wealth? It, it won't be my priority. Uh, with regards to the regions, I'll actually decentralize. Decentralize, you see, it's important that the people uh, that are beneficiaries of a certain service uh, have a hand in deciding um, who governs them and how the money is used. So I'll, I'll focus on decentralization, if I had my way. Because, I mean, in my area, I live in Nigeria, you know, I mean, I don't know how the money is spent, if there's any money to be spent. Um, I've said I'll pay property tax, nobody has come. Um, so, I, I, I am not too sure that our problem is the administrative machinery. I think we have the machinery. I think it's more about using whatever resources we have to create wealth. That's for me, that's the issue. Yeah. With, with regards to the means testing that the uh, finance minister hinted, you sound like we should, we, should, we, should, we should take heed. You see, if I had my own way, I abolish boarding schools. It's a total waste. We can't afford it. Our boarding boarding schools, if you think your child needs to go to a boarding school, I mean, pay for it. And whatever money uh, we can save, we can use for other things, or use to support people that, you know, are disadvantaged. You know, there's certain things that we have to be realistic about. Abolish, the boarding school system, abolish it. We can't afford it. You, we, we can't afford it. You, you think there's too many pro poor policy that just seems to cover all? Uh, I'm not, I don't know about too many pro poor policies, but I think that we expect the state to do too much with the resources it has. We all have to accept that the, 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 the state's resources are finite, and there's only certain things that the state can do. And that's a certain conversation we need to have. You know, it's not about pro poor, no. We need pro poor policies because every society has people who are disadvantaged. We need to support them because that's how you create a society. But we also got to, we've got to be clear in our minds that the states cannot do everything. And that's, I mean, no states anywhere in the world can do everything. And um, that sort of realization must come to. And we've got to remember that they've got to make choices. There'll always be choices. Uh, the central bank has consistently reduced interest rate. And so we were expecting that because interest rates were coming down, businesses will borrow, expand their businesses. And then, you know. You see, um, you see the, 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 the thing is that it's not even so much about the interest rates. But, you know, the biggest contractor, the biggest, the biggest contractor, the biggest purchaser, the biggest supplier, the biggest, he has no money to spend. So even if I give him money, what would you do with it? Because you'd have to go to him. Yes. <laughs> what would you do with it? That's the challenge. We need more income. The, the, the economy needs money. There's no money, money, you know. And I remember at the beginning of the year, I said, you know, I wrote and I said the cash will be scarce. Cash is scarce, you know. The 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 the, the, the village chief who spends money, and I, you should know. I mean, you should know. <laughs> the day you go to, when you go back home, and don't have money to spend. Nobody has money. <laughs> exactly. The chief has no money. So, so what it, happens? It doesn't trickle. Down. It doesn't trickle down. You know. So. That's the challenge. So we, we need to change the structure where the biggest spender is not the state. No, we need to change that. We need to, we need to grow the private sector. The only way we are going to grow private sector is through exports. And we need to promote exports. You know, look, every Ghanaian wake up in the morning, we should say, export, export. Anything. Think of anything that you can export. We've got to export. We have to export. We, you, know, um, you know, if you go back to um, our traditional setting, mm. you have a farm. You grow, uh, you, you, you farm, uh, you, 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 then you, you, know, you consume some of the stuff, then you sell some to buy the things that you couldn't farm. Well, in Ghana, on our farm, we don't farm enough to feed ourselves. Then we, we borrow 
to, to buy the things that we... I mean, it's not sustainable. It, it can't go on like this. And that's what we've done all the time. You see what I mean? So instead of farming and selling the excess, we, we farm, there's not enough, and then we borrow to buy the things that we, don't, we didn't farm. I mean, really. It's not sustainable. We are coming straight back. Don't even charge that remote. Well, with the kind of politics that we run, where, you know, you always have a set of wolves or hyenas in the background ready to pounce on you and literally eat you up. If you are in the helms of affairs, can you dare come out and say, listen, I am declaring an economic emergency, prudence. And these are the list I'm going to do A, B, C, D, increase taxes, sack ministers, cut wages, get them out of their luxury cars. <laughs> That's suicide. What, political suicide? Yeah, political suicide. So you're better off just yeah, managing to cry across that till, <laughs> till, you know, it, it hits the end. But is, uh, I, I, sus uh, I, I, I'm not a politician, mm. but I suspect that, you know, if Ghanaians understand and, you know, we're savvy enough to understand the issues, we'll go along with it. I understand. If Ghanaians, if Ghanaians understand, we'll go along with it. And, and that's the most important. To Come and put the cards down. Put, put the cards down. And explain to us, you know, these are the issues. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And we'll go, Ghanaians will go with you. I mean, you know, we're generally, uh, Ghanaians, we're not a violent people. We're not aggressive people. We're generally compliant. We're a little corrupt, you know. But, hey. But generally, you know, if you come explain to the people, they'll, they'll go with you. I, I, I firmly And give it. a time frame, so well, give me two years, exactly, or give me three exactly, years. Exactly, give me exactly, the... exactly. We'll, we'll go with you. Um, I, I strongly believe that. Um, of course, it's not, it's not uh, whoever, we need uh, somebody who's brave to be able to say, I'm going to do it. Because, um, you know, that's what I, I think. But it's not been tested. But of course, think, I mean, members of opposition. Ah, we told you they can't do it. Uh, now he's coming out to declare. You see, if, if 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 you go out and you uh, outline the issues and make people understand, I, I can assure you get the support that you need. Um, people will go out and explain why you're doing what you're doing because people will start to see a change in their circumstances. It will be painful and slow, but at least they'll see that at least the decline is stopped and they begin to go forward. And you get people who support you. I, I strongly believe that. Because whatever decision you take, you need Yes, you need to, to carry, carry people along. along. You need to carry people along. I mean, nobody said leadership was easy. So let's not make excuses for anybody. But that's what it is, you know. I'm going to carry people along. It's, I mean, when you say that's what it is, it's, it's very frightening, it's very scary. It doesn't have to. Why is it scary? It doesn't have to be. Uh, it doesn't have to be scary. Uh, it is. Because there's somebody listening who's lost their job, or somebody listening who's looking for a job, and here we are saying that listen, either we cut expenditure or spend more because we are broke. I didn't say we're broke. If you look at our numbers, we're broke. If you spend over nine percent of your income on three things, you're broke. And uh, I'm hoping that. Uh, as, uh, as a people, we um, start to now, uh, you know, put pressure on the people that uh, we, we have elected into power, wherever they are, to start to do the things that will bring us long-term prosperity. That's the only way it's going to change, you know, and, and to be discerning enough to realize those that are for us and those that are against us. And I, I go back, listen to the Minister of Finance. He's speaking the truth. For the, one of, for one of the first times, the Minister of Finance is telling us the truth. Listen to him. He, he has the money. Yes, but he's telling us the truth. When's the last time a Minister of Finance said that? Minister, any Minister of Finance said that? So if for nothing at all, give him the benefit of the doubt and say, you know, maybe he, um, having the courage to tell us the truth, will have the courage to take the decisions that we need to take to um, start to now deliver as long-term prosperity. He is speaking the truth. Listen to the man. Would you, would you want a clear speech message rather than snippets of, look, I think we should do this. Should he come out clear that, look, these are my cards. Well, these are my deck of cards. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what I was, I was taught, uh, that I learned, I've learned. They say, good news 
you disaggregate. So if you have good news, you drop it one by one by one. Bad news, you aggregate and dump it. So look, it's easier. Now that we've started, let's have all the bad news and put on the table. And then we'll move on. But listen to the Minister of Finance. He, more than anything else, knows exactly what the financial position is. I mean, it's not easy for a Minister of Finance to go and say we should tighten our belt. I mean, it's a huge statement. See, that, uh, once upon a time, we had, you know, Dr. Baumia saying, we know where the money is, there's money here, we don't need money. You know, they trumpet and jumped up and down the law. We have the magic one, we have the solution. And so you then come, you know, we entrust you with power, and you say, well, that's it, there's no money, we're broke. I mean, it's not going to be accepted, is it? It's not a matter of, um, I mean, what, what Dr. Baumia said, that is a different matter. What I'm talking about, what is it now? What is, what's the situation now? I, 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 that's a different matter. And I said, listen to the Minister of Finance. We should listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. You know, I mean, what is, what, what is it now? And if our, our Minister of Finance has the courage to say things like that, then at least we should start to listen to him and say, maybe this man is the right person who, who will now start to take some of the tough decisions for us to go forward. You know? And then I think from now on, the electorate, as soon as you face any politician, you have to ask how much of the barrels, how much containers went <laughs> yes. away empty. Ghanaians, any politician, you <laughs> need to say, how, what percentage of containers, containers went, went back empty. empty? That's all it is. You can't, that's all it is. Export, export, export. The number is 024 366 2001. 366 That's Tanti's Fashions. They make my shirt for the show and it's been brilliant. I want to say thank you so much, Ken no, Thompson, much. for explaining much. the economy in English. The economy in English. I think that should have been the title of the show. The economy in English. No jargons, just pure, simple English. We are broke. We want to be rich. More containers should go outfield. Tomorrow we're back to do this all over again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>